welcome to Crafty Gemini Creates. For this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a really handy crochet hook roll organizer. These are super cute. I'm going to use them for my crochet hooks because I crochet, but you can totally customize this design to make it taller if you have knitting needles, or I also like to make these for my kids for their crayons, markers, or colored pencils. So let's get started. I'm going to show you a few different supplies and products that we're going to be using that will be really helpful. Really quickly, actually, let me show you how it's going to roll up. So it's called a roll, right? We roll it up and then it secures here with an elastic and a button. So it's really cute to take on car trips or just to throw it in your bag when you're taking your projects on the go. So here we go. Let's go over the fabric we're using. This uh, strip here, it's a roll of two and a half inch strips. It's called Kinetic by another uh, point of view and it's for Wyndham Fabrics. We're also going to be working with some quarter inch elastic and then we're going to need a button, any type of button that you like that has a shank on the back is going to be the easiest to use for the closure we're using for this project. So let's get started with the tumbler pieces that we're going to use because instead of just using the plain strips, I've decided to give the back of the project a really cute scrappy kind of patchwork look with these mini tumblers that we have back here. And so to do that, because it's not a big project, I really love this mini tumbler. And remember, there's a link in the description box below that you can click on it and the full list of supplies I'm using in this tutorial will be right there for you. So let me show you how we're going to use the mini tumbler. This is already designed and made to be used with these two and a half inch strips, so it works out super easily. I'm going to lay it here and you can do it any way. I just started already with the strip. What I have here are a bunch of these strips stacked up and it's really quite easy to cut right through the, with the rotary cutter through a bunch of layers. It's going to save you some time. So I'm going to line this up here, trim off the edge a little bit. So I make sure all my edges are nice and flush. So I do one cut on one side and then I'm going to go and cut on the other side to get my first stack of mini tumbler blocks. And you can see once I remove this, I have a full stack here of these mini tumbler blocks. So do that a couple of times because you're going to need two rows of eight mini tumblers for the whole project. So we're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch these up into position. Now let me show you how we're going to do it because since we have that angle of the mini tumbler, you can't just grab them and stitch them together like this. Right? We have the narrow or shorter side up top and then the wider part at the bottom. If you try to stitch it like this, you're not going to get the angle that you need. They need to be, uh, one needs to be going up and one the other way. So I'm going to turn this one and now you can see that they're going to lay nice and close together, nice and flush. So that's where we need to stitch. So that's what you're going to do. Just alternate a short side, a long side, a short side, a long side, and you're going to put together your row of eight like this. Okay, we're going to head over to the sewing machine. Now it might be a little confusing to stitch them together, but it's real simple. Lay it first how it's going to look with the pretty side of the fabrics facing up and then you're going to take one and flip it over the other. Match up the raw, raw edges here and that's going to let you know exactly where you need to stitch. You don't want to get, I, I don't want you to get confused at how you're looking at it because you see how it's kind of tilted this way. If you do stitch right where the raw edges meet, it'll turn out perfectly. So let's grab these and head over to the sewing machine to make another strip like this one. I'm just using my basic quarter inch seam allowance. So we have our eight, four and four. Now we're head over here to the ironing board and just give these a good press so that they're not all buckled up and standing like that. You can press the seams any way you want to. It won't really make a difference for this little project. Okay. Now let's trim these up to size because as you can see, the mini tumblers have their own angle on the ends. We have two of these and that's what we're going to use here. You see you have one and two. The other two strips that we're going to use in here are just solid strips. So when you open up your pack of two and a half inch strips, they come at two and a half inches this way, like the lengthwise grain. And then along the crosswise grain is the full width of the fabric. So they're quite long. You'll be able to crank out a ton of these projects, but you're not going to need the entire strip for this. So just go ahead and cut off chunks that are a little bit smaller for you to work with at least 12 inches in length. And then we'll, we'll trim them down. So you can see these, grab a different one here. And so I'm going to use a solid strip up top, then I'll do 
one of the mini tumblers, then I'll switch it back to the solid, and then another mini tumbler. And I'm gonna stitch these up all together. Don't worry about the wonky edges because we're gonna trim that all up to size before we cut out the interfacing that we'll be using for the project. So lay it out visually how you like it. You can play around with your fabrics and your strips and then start to lay them together pretty sides touching and head over to your sewing machine and stitch them together. So now you should have one, something that looks like this. We have a solid strip, a pieced one with mini tumblers, solid mini tumblers again. Now let's trim this down to size. So grab your ruler and I just straighten it off any side that you want to because we're going to end up making it a total of 11 and a half inches going this way. So just straighten off one edge and a good little trick to get you to line it up so you make sure that you're cutting straight is to line up one of your seam lines, assuming that you stitch kind of straight, you can line up one of the straight seam lines with one of the lines on your ruler. So if I'm measuring right here at three and a quarter, this little wherever the, it's on the ruler, I'm just lining it up all the way across. And now I know that the ruler is straight on this side. So when I cut, it's going to be a nice and squared up side. And I can turn it over, measure my 11 and a half inches from there, and then trim up on this side as well. I'm going to grab a second ruler here to give me some more height. Again, line up one of the lines on one of the seam lines on your project here and just chop 11 and a half. Perfect. Okay, so here's one rectangle. Now it's starting to look like something. This is going to be the backside of our crochet hook roll. So let's move on. That's the outside. Now you need something similar. It's going to got to be the same size for the inside part. And I've just kept it simple. I'm just pieced together four strips, same size. So we're going to measure it and trim it down. The width should be the same. If you, if you did your quarter inch seam allowances consistently, the height of the project here should be the same, but we're going to trim this down to the same 11 and a half that we just did the other. All right. So there we have our front and our back. That's two. Now let's work for on the inside pocket that we're going to actually slip our crochet hooks into. So for that, super simple, right? We're working with these pre-cut strips. Cut two, you want to cut them at the same width. So we're going to trim these down to 11 and a half. Just make sure that everything is matching and we've sewn two together and then another set of two. All right. One is going to be for the outside of the pocket, what you see when you slip in your hooks. And the other side is basically going to be the lining part on the inside because we don't want any raw edges. So I've done two and two of these. Let me trim them down to 11 and a half as well. All right. So let's stitch this, um, the pocket together. So just pretty sides to pretty sides. Make sure that they're touching. And all I'm going to sew on are the top and the bottom. We're going to leave the sides open so we can flip it right side out. So you can put some clips, you can use pins if you want to. I'm just going to take it straight like this because I think I can keep it pretty steady at my machine. And it's kind of wide. You can just flip it out just like this. It's not too tight. Roll it out, make sure that that center seam is going along the sides of your project, and then just give it a good press. All right, pocket is done and fully lined. Let's move on over back here to our pieces. So here's what we have so far. We have a pocket, we have an inside of our crochet hook roll. This is basically gonna go like this and then this is gonna be on the back side. But if we do it just with the cotton fabrics, it's gonna be a little too flimsy. So let's add something on the inside that I really like to work with for projects like this. This is called Pellon Thermolam Plus, and it's kind of like a fleecy project, similar to a fusible fleece. I think it's loftier and has more body, and it has fusible on one side. So one side is smooth, the other side has the bumpy, you know, the little glue dots or adhesive dots on one side. I'm going to lay one of my pieces here and use these as my template since I know that's the size that I need, right? Simple way of doing it, no need for rulers. Lay it nice and flat, and I'm just gonna carefully cut around it. And you just need one layer of this. Okay. Now, I've cut it with the fusible side face up, so it's already ready for 
to, uh, to be pressed right to the back side of the fabric. So let's head over here, fuse it into place. Now we're going to attach our pocket. Here it is. Let's scoot this out. And that way you can play around with it. If you use a variety of fabrics, I kind of like the way that this purple is popping because I feel like I have a lot of blues and greens. So yeah, we're going to stitch it this way. So I'm going to stitch this right into place just along the sides, kind of like to baste it down into place. So for these, because we're already working with the Thermoland Plus, it's quite bulky. So I'd rather use my little wonder clips here instead of using pins. So let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch this down here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So here is the inside. Here is the back. Let's lay these pretty sides together. Okay match up those raw edges. Now we need to put in the closure, right? We're gonna use an elastic closure. So for that, I just have quarter inch elastic here and I'm gonna cut about a four inch piece and I'm just roughly measuring with the squares on my mat. There's four squares, that's four inches. And on the center here of one of the sides, we are going to put this in with the raw edges going in towards the inside and the loop, well actually I'm sorry, for the loop going towards the inside and the raw edges facing out. That is going to allow us so that when we flip it right side out, it's now reversed. So the loop is out and the ends are inside the seam allowance. So let's do that. We're gonna baste it into place with a couple of stitches, no big deal, just like this. Head over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna go back and forth with some back stitches here to secure these ends in place. Make sure that you don't have your uh, elastic twisted or anything. I just lay it flat and bring in the two ends. Oops, just like that. You can put a wonder clip of course to hold it steady and head over to the machine. All right, so the elastic is in place. The button will go on last. Let's now put these two fabrics pretty sides touching. Grab our wonder clips and we're gonna stitch these together all around. We're gonna clip it. We gotta leave an opening though so we can flip the whole thing right side out. And I like to do that at the top. I don't do it at the bottom because the, the pocket is already there so it's quite bulky. And so we're gonna leave it open at the top. It'll be a lot easier to flip right side out. All right, let me pull this. Make sure that you're pressing your pieces really good so you can match up those raw edges. Otherwise, it'll shrink up on you sometimes in the seam allowance. All right, so that looks good. Let me leave an opening at the top. I'm gonna leave it somewhere up here. Let's leave it like this. Give yourself about mm, a five or six inch opening and I think that'll be plenty to flip the whole thing right side out. So we're gonna start on one end of my mark Stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance, come to the end, pivot, and come all the way around and stop on the other end. So we're starting and stopping right here, okay? Back stitch both at the beginning and at the ends because when you flip it right side out, if you don't, you're gonna pull it apart, okay? So let's trim up some corners now that we've stitched it all around. I still have an opening here. I'm gonna trim up the corners just to reduce some bulk because the Thermaland Plus is quite bulky. And that's all I do. I just kind of take a little sliver off of each end at an angle. Make sure you don't cut into your stitches. Otherwise, you'll have to go back to the sewing machine and stitch that seam up again. And you can do this with a pair of scissors as well if you don't feel comfortable using a rotary cutter. Okay, all right, so let's head over to the ironing board. We're gonna find our hole here, the opening, and we're gonna turn the whole thing right side out. 
poke out the corners. I like to do it by poking out the corners first. I feel like it just lets me get my hands in there and get more of the bulk out quicker. All right, so it's starting to come together. Definitely, don't forget to give it a good press. I pretty much press my seams almost after every single seam. Just good practice. Ooh, those mini tumbler blocks look super cute here. All right. Now we have our opening up top. So what I like to do is just come in here. I kind of get both my pointer fingers and I'll just fold the fabric in. Tuck everything in and lay it as flat as I can get it without it showing one fabric on the other. You know what I mean? Like you want the, the seam to be right along the edge. Just like how we did on the other sides, okay? And I hold it where I kind of like it, give it a good press. And then definitely the Wonder Clips will help in here because we're going to go back and top stitch all around and then make the little compartments for our crochet rolls. Pull this out a little bit more. Press that. Okay. Sometimes you need to manipulate the fabric a little bit. That's why I take my time in this part. Try to make it as seamless as you can. Now let's head over to the machine and we're going to top stitch super close to the outer edge, all the way around, okay? And then we'll come back and make our little compartments and put on a button and we're almost done. I'm just gonna back stitch at the last little bit. So far, so good, almost done. Again, give it a press. It's just a habit. <laughs> Looks great. Now we're actually gonna stitch right through the entire project and that's what's going to allow us to have these really nice compartments for our crochet hooks without it being too flimsy or for them to fly out, okay? You can see here, even when I hold it upside down, the crochet hooks don't fall out, so that's really gonna be helpful for this project and I think that has to do with all the bulk since we're stitching through it. So you can decide on how far apart you want these stitching lines to be, right? Depending on what you're gonna put in it. If you have really chunky markers, I would suggest putting one in and then measuring across, give yourself some space because you need to account for the bulk of whatever you're sliding in there. For these generic uh, crochet hooks that I have here that are aluminum, I believe, I have sizes all the way from K to like D. And so I've just decided to go ahead and do one inch increments. So you can take your ruler and take a marker and just go ahead and measure out every inch. Now, if you don't just want to have crochet hooks in here, you can also make an opening that's a little bit bigger I'll show you on this one. I left this one a little bit wider so that I can put in a, a little pair of scissors that I need to cut my yarn with. So you can customize it. This is all up to you right here, all right, to get your crochet hooks in there or whatever else you want to put in. Now we'll just draw straight lines down. And you don't have to, but this is a good guide. As you're sewing at the sewing machine, you'll know exactly where you need to stitch. And it'll, it'll go super quickly as well. Now, because we're going to stitch through all this, we're just going to do a basic straight stitch, but we do need to remember to uh, back stitch at the beginning and at the end because this is where the bulk of the, the wear and tear is going to be on the crochet roll. Right where the pocket meets the inside fabric, you definitely want to secure it right there with some back stitches. Now I'm almost done with these lines. I'm just going to stitch a few for you to see. Okay. This would be cool for color pencils for kids too. Put together a little kit of kids crafts to take in the car since it rolls up nicely. That would be great. So I'm back stitching right where the pocket meets the fabric and then continue to stitch all the way down and again back stitching at the end. I'll do it again and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. But back stitch back and forth right where they both meet and come out the end. Now because you have some bulk, sometimes the fabric wants to move on you. So make sure that you, you can either use a walking foot on your sewing machine to kind of help feed all the bulky layers through. Or what I do is I kind of just press on the fabric and keep it laying nice and flat to when I get to the end. So right here, let's trim away these threads. And you can see that we have our stitches and it's nice and reinforced right there where it meets uh, the inside fabric. 
So let's grab a couple of crochet hooks just to give you the visual. And there you go. Once you have those in place, if you decide to do all crochet hooks, go ahead and do all the separate increments like how I did here at one inch. If you want to have a, a pair of scissors or something, go ahead and do that and actually put the item in there. Because the next step is to add a button. And you want the button to be right where you need it to be for whatever you're putting inside. So this, these scissors, for example, are wider than my crochet hooks. So what happens is when I go to roll this up, it's now making me be, it, the roll is going to be the width of whatever the widest item is you have in here, if that makes sense. So the scissors are here, the crochet hook is going to roll like that, basically two on two. Two, 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 and here we have the loop and our button. So what we do is, we roll it up with the stuff that we want inside, take your marker, right? I'll do it on this one. So roll it up, take your marking device, and pull your elastic over and kind of measure where would be a fine place to put it. And it's usually going to be on the center seam of two strips because that's the same place that we measured the elastic, right? Everything is going right down the center so it's nice and symmetrical. And now I have a cute little pack here of some little fruit buttons. And I think I like the lemon one. This is too cute. I think I'm going to put the lemon one to go with this. So we now have our mark here. Let's get a, a hand sewing needle. And I'm just going to put it in place. You want to get a button that has a shank on it because that's going to allow you to drape the elastic over it and it has something to hold on to. The same way that I have this one here. All right. It has a little shank on it and it allows the button to sit up high so the elastic can drape right over it. And it gets caught on whatever the width of the button is. All right. And so the button is just a couple of hand stitches, not too hard. And I like to go through all the layers. So I'm going to bring it up right close to my mark. And then I have a knot already on the back and then I'm going to feed the button right through. So the button lays in place and then I'll just come in real close to the other side of my mark. So I know that the thread is going to be nice and tight on the shank of the button. And then you're just going to do that a few more times and then tie yourself a knot and the project is going to be done. Okay. Let me tie this off real quick. After you do your little knot, you can just trim your thread and that's it. Your little crochet hook roll is going to be complete. Feel free to use this for any types of projects that you want. Customize it. It doesn't always have to be a crochet hook, but I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click my subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>